What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty Pick here with another episode of Steelers Touch and Under. On today's episode, we are looking at the numbers behind the Pittsburgh Steelers victory over the New York Jets on Sunday night football. All right, the Steelers had an awesome game. The Steelers didn't start off well. They came back. They played pretty well to win 37-15. You got to be happy about that. But how did they get there? There's obviously the film and the tape, and there's plenty of other YouTube channels about that. Everyone knows I love my stats. I love talking GM kind of stuff. I love thinking about the numbers behind things, the analytics, all those cool things. So I want to talk about some of these numbers. Um, let's kick off with time of possession. This kind of sounds a bit odd, but for those of you that did catch my preview to Steelers versus New York Jets, you will know that one of the five areas that are the things that keys to victory that I said was hold the goddamn ball and hold it and make sure you have time possession over 35 minutes, ideally at least over 32 minutes. Well, the Steelers did that. They achieved 32 minutes and nine seconds, right? That gives them the ball a whole 10% of the game more than their opponent or close to, right? Um, that's a big difference. That's the difference between a whole drive. Um, that's the, And that can be seven points. The Steelers won by a lot more than that because they're able to stop the other team, but at least gives them a chance to be able to score more points from their get-go. Right, each team kicks off to each other twice in the game, guaranteed. When they, whoever kicks off at the half, the other or the, the start of the game, the other person, the other team kicks off at the half. So the ability to hold the ball every three minutes longer you hold the ball is an extra drive, maybe even two, depending on how quickly you can run your drives through to score points. Then you get to your opponent, which automatically increases the potential of you winning a game. So that is a key statistic. And as I've said before, the Steelers, when you go back to time and possession, have won. When they own the time possession, they have like an 80% win record, right? So it's really, really key. The next thing I want to talk about is penalties. Penalties killed um, the Steelers in a couple of their losses, and they and it was also still a problem a little bit in the Raiders game. Four penalties for 36 yards is also a really good thing for the Steelers in terms of only four penalties. This has been seven and eight um, some weeks. It's, it's much better to see this down to four. From a team perspective, and we'll talk about players individually as well coming out of this game and, and how that fit into it. Obviously, the five from five conversions on 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 third down of 14 is not ideal. Um, and it's kind of interesting I'm talking about these numbers. I've heard things like Russ has threw for the most amount of yards in a debut by, by a Steeler since 1950 when the records began, or um, the, you know, for the Steelers. Then yeah, I also heard things like he's the only one to um you know, have thrown for two touchdowns and no interceptions um, on, on the day, on, on, on his debut as well. So there are kind of some cool just general statistics there. The first time um, there have been over 400 yards, um, you know, in since 2018, I think I saw, which was kind of hard to believe. I need to go fact check that. I heard that on the Pat McAfee show. Um, but there are a couple of just cool statistical things there um, that we heard about coming out of this game. So I'm giving you a different set of numbers to those. But there, so, so as I said, time possession, Third down penalties are three things as a team. And obviously the turnovers having, you know, intercepting out Aaron Rodgers um, a couple of times there was absolutely huge for the Steelers. Um, there was a fumble force as well that they pounced on. Same thing happened. Steelers had a couple of fumbles there with Najee. Um, they didn't record them there, um, but, you know, there were a couple of things there with incompletion and stuff like that um, on getting the ball back. So that was kind of interesting to see. But overall, from a team perspective, there were three stats that made a big difference to this Pittsburgh Steelers team coming out and coming out on the margin of victory, at which they did. Let's pivot from a player perspective now. Now, passing, as we talked about going into the game, we talked about the fact that Justin Fields, through six games, had only thrown for 1,100 yards, less than 200. And I said, in one of my keys to victory is pick a quarterback, and I was more for Russell Wilson. I said that. I've been on the Russell Wilson train all season. Vindic feel really vindicated on that. But <clears throat> pick a quarterback that will throw for over 250 yards. That is going to be required to beat Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Now, yeah, they still had some defensive turnovers. If they hadn't have had those, it would have been even more required. Well, even though he only threw for 55.2% completion rate, 264 yards, that is already, already almost a quarter of what Justin Fields has thrown through the six games. Russell Wilson has done it in one. Big difference there. He also, Russell Wilson has two touchdowns now in the season versus Justin Fields' is five. No interception for Russell Wilson. 
He either had a rushing touchdown as well. Justin Fields has had five so far this season. So Russell Wilson at the quarterback position, we've definitely played a lot better. Yards per attempt was 9.1 versus 6.9. Like it, it just a quarterback rating was 109 despite the Vaughn to Justin Fields 93.5. Um you know, it was it was good. And sacks. Russell Wilson did not let him get self get sacked very easily. He either threw the ball away a couple of really astute times. He threw the ball down low, so it was an interception. He intercepted on a couple of guys. Um, he found a way to get the ball on a over the top um, for some gains, like one of them for, for Najee, I think, that went for about uh, 10 or 11 yards. Um, so from that perspective, Russell Wilson did a really good job. Um, I first came back from a long-term injury and after being benched last year and all the rest of it. This was a terrific um, terrific um, de- of his debut game for the season for, for Russell Wilson. And even his long on 44, when you think that long on 55, Justin Fields, like that shows you how deep he was trying to get that ball down the field. And some of the moon balls, as people are calling them. So Russell Wilson obviously had a day. This bodes well for the team. Kind of important to think about. Keeping through some some key numbers behind where the Steelers are at at five and two, particularly in their win against the Jets, I thought it was interesting to, to to think about it from the perspective of the rushing side of things. Obviously, Najee had a day. Um, Najee's improved a lot over the last couple of weeks, and he's really improved his fortunes both in rushing yardage um, and his ability to just make yardage from the line of scrimmage. And that is a big deal for this Steelers team. They need guys like Najee being a real threat. Um, so, and a dual threat as well. So <clears throat> I was pretty happy to see Najee um, and the way he played, get another TD, um, two through seven games. That's that's pretty good. He stayed healthy. Obviously, George Pickens had a day with, I think it was five receptions, one touchdown, 111 yards. Um, that was pretty big from um, George Pickens. So I can actually give you that stat directly because we will have it in here. Uh, it should be uploaded by this point. Um but overall targets for George Pickens, yeah, five receptions from nine targets for 111 yards, one TD. Yep, so got that right. Um, but when you look at him over the course of the season, that brings him down to most 474 yards through seven games, um, the six games where he started. Um, yards per reception is 15.3. That's still insane. It shows, though, the value of getting him the football, and that needs to keep happening. Um, and that you saw Russell Wilson willing to make throws that George Pickens can only George Pickens is going to be able to catch. But I also want to talk about Pat Freemuth particularly because Pat Freemuth, um, Pat Freemuth is having a, a potentially a career year. He's 24 from 29 in terms of receptions for targets, um, 245 yards, two TDs. Now, you look at the course of Pat Freemuth's career, and he's obviously had a bit of injuries, so it's up there. But he's already so far equaled the two touchdowns he had in 2022 and 2023. The most yards he's ever had is 732. He is on track. So he's only like played in seven games, started five. Um, but he, in terms of wh- where he's headed, he could be having a big year. Um, he could, he should easily surpass his second best year of yardage in 2021. He should get close to 2022. But, you know, as long as he stays healthy, it should be a career year from Pat Freemuth. Um, and that's what we really, really want to see. Um you know, really, really want to see he's up to his most amount of yards per game, our second most amount of yards per game as well. I only expect that to increase. Plus, as Pickens gets the ball more, um, if they do go out and bring in a wide receiver before the trade deadline, like a Mike Williams or a DeAndre Hopkins or someone else, um, even a Terry McLaurin, but I, I don't see the commanders giving him up now, or a Cortland Sutton, for example, that could be a big deal. But he's also averaging the most yards per target that he has in his career. So Really excited for Pat Freemuth. He's another individual stat behind some of the wins that have got them to um, five and two on the season. The other guy I want to mention um, is Van Jefferson, who did get a TD, his first TD of the year in this game. I said in the preview about thinking about wide receivers and getting wide receivers active and what that would mean and the value of Roman Wilson, then Roman Wilson was out of the game. But I said, between once Russell Wilson starts opening up the passing game by throwing to the tight ends, which he did with Darnell early, um, first play of the game, but he did Darnell, he tried with Haywood, he did it with Freemuth. I said that would open up Pickens, especially if then he can work in Warren and Harris. And that is exactly what happened. And then I said, if that can happen, look for a guy like Van Jefferson or Calvin Austin to have a good day. And Calvin Austin caught a couple of really critical balls, but Van Jefferson had a great TD against the team that his father's a wide receivers coach at. But congratulations to Van Jefferson on his first TD of the year. 
I love that I could get that right for you guys out there. I love that like that that take was correct because Van Jefferson is a good route runner. He could be a really, really good equal third wide receiver on the list with Calvin Austin. So it was exciting to see that um, particularly. On the defensive side, it's going to be very hard to go past. Um, obviously, TJ Watt had an awesome game. He's going to have an awesome game almost every game. So I don't want to take that for a granted, but it is what it is. But good old Beanie Bishop, two interceptions of Aaron Rodgers. It's it's hard not to ho- like hope or overhype this guy. Um, he's had a terrific start to his um, NFL career. That, that's all you can say. Um, really, two quarter, two tackles for a loss. That's pretty actually up there with this team. The most is TJ with eight, Hamay with four. He's had a couple of quarterback hits as well. Um, I think Beanie Bishop, yeah, he's had two, uh, one quarterback hit. He's had half a sack. He's got now two interceptions. He's got poor, four pass defense, which I think is, yeah, second on this list. Beanie Bishop, if, if, if depending on how many games Zach Frazier misses, I mean, I, I like, I don't, <coughs> I know Peyton Wilson's out there, but Peyton Wilson's not having the, the rookie year that, um, that Beanie Bishop's having. And it's kind of cool to think to WVU guys, you know, just down the road, um, to WVU guys for all those out there listening and for my co-host Shannon Millette, two WVU guys could be considered rookie of the year for the Steelers. Um, but I think Beanie Bishop's up there right now. I, I do think he is in lockstep as the d- at least defensive rookie for the Steelers in the year, but I think he's of the rookie for the year. In terms of additions, I think Deshaun Elliott's there. I mean, Deshaun Elliott's had an awesome start to the year. Um, but when I really look at it from all perspectives, Beanie Bishop is the rookie of the year. They're not playing. Look at look down, going down the list. Vatanu's out for the year. Frazier's injured at the moment. Otherwise, I would have said Frazier before being these two interceptions. Roman Wilson, we're not seeing anything so far there, and I don't think you're going to this year. Maybe he needs to be shut down for the year. I've seen that take. Maybe that needs to happen. You've got Payson, Peyton Wilson out there. McCormick is a, is a smoky because McCormick's having a great year. He was a machine in the second half. Um, against the Jets. He's going to be terrific next year. Just think how good he is this year. What's he going to be like next year? Um, but, and then obviously Ryan Watts is out for the year as well. Um, but Beanie Bishop, Beanie Bishop is someone that is having a terrific year and good on him. As Mike Tomlin says, he's willing to learn. He's willing to do the hard stuff. He's getting everything right. He's older at 25 too. He's an older guy. had a six-year college career. Um, but as Mike Tomlin said, in the situational football meetings on Fridays, Beanie Bishop's in there asking the right questions, doing the right things, implementing the knowledge. And congratulations to Beanie Bishop on a great game and what is turning out to be a fantastic rookie season. Now, for him, it is about staying fit. So that's another guy that's, I guess, I guess a number behind why the Steelers are out where they're at, why they beat the Jets, why they're at five and two. Um, so that's kind of a, that, that's a big thing that I think that a lot of fans might be looking over a little bit with other things going on. Um, I thought Patrick Queen looked a bit better in this game as well, so that's nice to think. Um, Jeremiah Moon had a good game, and then obviously special teams. I mean, when you're blocking kicks, regardless of whether they're accepted or not, that is a big deal. Um, but look, that kind of brings me to what I was kind of the numbers that stood out to me. I've talked you through three numbers at a team perspective. I've talked you through some interesting numbers on offense and defense um, as well. But that's th- those things are really good examples of how the Steelers have got to where they're going. Uh, got to where they are right now, but also what needs to continue and where they and where they want to go, and how many more players can we start to bring across this journey that are having career years might not be already total in the yards per mount for the season that they've received that they've been able to catch, but it might be that the yards per reception it might be for like Pickens and Frymuth, for example, they're really good signs. A guy like a Beanie Bishop having a critical year in a critical spot with so many defensive back injuries, and you know, on a day when they elevated CJ Henderson, so. Really excited about where this team is headed at five and two. One more game against the Giants on Monday Night Football. Then they go into the bye. Then they come in for the downward stretch. And if they can go in at six and two into that bye period, this looks good. It's win four out of six division games, and suddenly you're at ten and you know you're at ten and two. Maybe they drop a couple um, in and around that. You know, in terms of Philadelphia, but then you beat Can one of Kansas City or Philadelphia. And the commanders, you, beat, you win two of those games, four division games. Suddenly, you're twelve and twelve and five, 
that'd be a really put them in a really good stead to both win the north and definitely you know go into the playoffs with some momentum even if they don't win the north so i think 12 games probably can win you the north particularly if you win both games against the ravens um i i really really do um but yeah again there's some more numbers behind what the steelers now need to do between now and the end of the season to be able to make a playoff push be let me know in the comments is there a number that stands out to you is there something really exciting that you're liking about this steelers team and as always go steelers